Hey guys, Blazing Wrath here, and in this video, I'm going to share some tips on every weapon that's currently in Halo Infinite. It's been a while now since the game came out, and I think I'm ready to share the knowledge that I've gathered, and hope maybe these tips may help you get a little better at the game. Before I get into that, though, make sure to watch the first part before this video. Once you do that, come back here. Another thing I should mention is that when it comes to precision weapons such as the sniper rifle, shock rifle, battle rifle, and stalker rifle, these are mostly determined by player skill. That being said, there are tips I can provide to help you use precision weapons better. One last thing I should mention is that this zoom feature that you'll find on most guns is not ADS. This does not grant you an accuracy buff. Instead, all this does is increase your red reticle range and you cannot be zoomed out by incoming fire. Weapons with an optic, however, can be zoomed out by incoming fire, such as the battle rifle, commando, and sniper rifle. Furthermore, the zoom feature can function differently on other guns, which I'll get into when I get to them. Now with all that being said, let's begin. First, let's start with the battle rifle, or BR for short, is a headshot focused kind of gun. One simple tip to note is that headshots don't matter until the shields are broken or close to breaking. Take note that each time you fire the gun, there is small vertical recoil. Aiming for the upper torso is the best thing to do to compensate for the recoil, especially when using the scope. Next is the Bulldog. This is a new shotgun in this game. It's not like previous Halo shotguns. It's a pump action 2-3 shot kill shotgun with a quick swap mag. Don't worry about headshot multipliers with this gun, and zooming in is not always necessary. There is one tip I can give on how to better use this gun and that's to hold down the trigger. Yes, you can hold down the trigger to get a more consistent rate of fire. Here's what the rate of fire looks like when pressing the trigger. And here's me holding the trigger. As you can see, holding down the trigger is the way to go for a consistent rate of fire. You're welcome. The Cinder Shot. Seems like a lot of people have trouble using this gun, so I'm going to shed some light on how I use it. This is a 400 grenade launcher, the first in the series and this might be my new favorite gun in the game. The way how I use this gun is to treat it like the Halo 5 Plasma Caster for those that played that game. What I mean by that is look down at the floor and have the projectile bounce right in front of you. Use your judgment on the, tra on the trajectory and on average you'll get a 3 shot kill and a perfect you'll get a 2 shot kill. Think of the projectile like frag grenades. They are both bounced before they explode. The projectiles will explode instantly as soon as it makes contact with an opponent. The cinder shot projectile also has a weird quirk where they'll pull, uh, they'll suck players in for a brief moment and can kind of disrupt player aim and position. Zooming in with this gun also acts as an ult fire mode. Now the shots aren't affected by gravity and can be controlled by wherever you aim. Keep in mind the projectile still needs to bounce before blowing up. The old fire mode is very hard to get used to, even I don't use it too often, but this option may be useful against long range targets and definitely aiming against vehicles. Next is a disruptor. The way how I use this gun is to shoot the opponent three times and you'll get an audio and visual cue that you put a damage over time effect on the opponent. If lucky, the electric effect may change to multiple opponents if, the, if that player that was shot has teammates nearby. You can kill the opponent in 6 shots and with the damage over time effect kill them, but I almost don't recommend this as you might die or trade in the process. 
depends on the situation and positioning. If you can land 6 shots and run away, let the damage over time effect kill them, or let a teammate finish them off. This gun is meant to weaken players and put them in a vulnerable state for a longer period of time. This is also a good assist weapon, when teammates are shooting at an opponent with a weapon that's meant to kill. Mix in disruptor shots to help kill the opponent your teammate is shooting at. There are also other cheeky ways to use this gun, but I won't really get into that in this video. Much like the Bulldog, this gun can also be fired by holding down the trigger, which I recommend by the way. Lastly, this gun is capable of EMPing vehicles in 7 shots. Boarding party bus. Not much to the sword, just press the fire button when the reticle turns red, and you can't zoom in with this weapon. The sword has I think 7 swings, and be wary on when you pull out the sword because there is a bit of draw time, which is very small and other players can hear the draw out audio cue if nearby. Keep some distance if watching a doorway because players with good awareness may see the glow of the sword. Next is the gravity hammer. Similar to the sword except you don't need to wait for the reticle to turn red to swing. Just get close enough and swing the hammer for a kill or even multiple kills because this weapon does have a blast radius in front of the hammer. Note, when pressing the fire button, there is a bit of time between swinging and actually dealing damage, so keep that in mind. Unlike hammers in the past, if you don't get in range for the kill, there is a radius where you can completely take out a player's shield. So this weapon can also act as a bootleg shield stripper if you don't get the kill. If that's the case, then just switch to the other weapon and finish them off. Next is the Heat Wave, a semi-auto forerunner shotgun with bouncing projectiles. Pressing the zoom in button won't zoom in, rather you'll activate an old fire mode. Now after extensive use of this gun, I've come to the conclusion that there is very little differences between horizontal and vertical mode. The two ways I can describe them is horizontal mode is basically easy close range mode, while vertical mode is hard long range mode. Both horizontal and vertical mode can achieve a 2-3 shot kill. Horizontal mode can be a 4 shot kill due to the shots not all connecting. Vertical mode is the most consistent because of its range potential and you won't get that rare 4 shot kill when in horizontal mode. Also, if there is a wall behind the opponent you're shooting, there is a chance you can damage yourself. The bouncing projectile mechanic has no practical use and just bounce for the sake of bouncing. Overall, just try to hit center mass with this gun, and if you can hit one vertical shot at a player long range, that player's shield will be low, giving you the opportunity to switch to the other weapon and finish that player off. Next, the Hydra. Think of this gun as a UNSC brute shot for those that played Halo 3. The rockets have a very small blast radius and can achieve a 3 shot kill when landed directly to a player. Once again, this gun doesn't zoom in, rather an old fire mode, which locks onto enemy players and vehicles. In this mode however, the gun will require one more shot to kill a player, making that a 4 shot kill. While in lockout mode, you don't have to maintain aim once you have an opponent locked on, as you can look away arc up, and fire up to 3 shots as the gun stays locked on. Try and land direct rockets at close range, 
if the opponent jumps, then shoot at them directly at that moment. Mid-range, you have two options. Either land one direct hit and shoot at the floor and use the blast radius for a kill. Or just shoot one direct hit and switch to the other weapon for a kill. Use lock on mode at long range only. And remember, if the opponent's behind cover, there is time to arc the shots up once locked on and may hit the opponent behind cover. The Rock. Wait, what? No, no, not that guy. This. Well, it's a rocket launcher. Not much to this. However, be aware that the blast radius is weird in this game. Sometimes you'll blow yourself up and not the enemy that was next to you. Other times you'll fire a shot and damage didn't see much. Skewer available. Rockets are close to mid-range weapons, so don't fire off at long range because the opponent is going to be able to react and move out of the way. One tip I can give is that if there's an opponent right next to you, you can try and shoot the floor or wall behind them for a kill or even the ceiling on rarer occasions. You'll have a chance of staying alive this way. The assault rifle. This gun is brain dead easy to use at the moment and you can zoom in with this gun too. I'm ashamed to even give a tip for this but I'm going to anyway. The note this gun does have recoil when holding down the trigger for a long period of time. Simply tap the trigger a few times to land accurate shots, then start holding the trigger. That's how I use this gun. The same can be applied when zooming in, and this gun has ridiculously stupid range. The Mangler. This weapon is, has been very controversial in the competitive community, but I won't really get into that. Maybe another time. This gun is essentially the game's hand cannon with a projectile drop, so keep that in mind when shooting at long range. Pressing the trigger fast will increase the recoil over time. This kills in three shots if the last shot hits the head, or four body shots. 
Another thing to note is that this gun can be punishing if you miss a couple shots as the rate of fire is pretty slow. Another way to use this gun is if you're not confident in landing that 3-4 to four shot kill, you can land 2 shots to break the opponent's shields and switch to the other weapon to finish them off. This sidekick. Using this gun can be very finicky, and I see quite a lot of beginners and some intermediate players ignore this. On one hand, I don't blame you. Why use this when the assault rifle ironically can be more accurate than the sidekick? Well, the sidekick can kill faster than the assault rifle, but the weapon is harder to use. Now there are two ways how I use this gun. The first way is to rapid fire the first four shots, then slow down and tap the trigger the rest of the mag. The gun is a seven shot kill to the head or ten body shots. Another way to use this gun is to practice your trigger finger and find that sweet spot between max rate of fire and tapping the trigger slowly. You'll know you got it right as I'll show you the difference. One last thing to note on the sidekick is that you can zoom in with the gun and get more range and this gun does have bloom as you might have noticed. Before we move on, I want to clarify that reticle spread on full auto weapons is to be expected. A reticle spread on precision weapons means that even if you quote unquote use the gun correctly, there is always a chance the gun may fail you and that may not be your fault necessarily, as someone else using the sidekick may be tapping the trigger rapidly and still kill you. So don't feel bad if the gun fails you, as that's not your fault, that's 343. The Pink Mist. This is the most different the gun has been in terms of function, compared to previous Halo games. I'll quickly mention here, do not use this gun at long range, as the needles track very poorly and are too slow to track the opponent, and, you know, the opponent will just dodge them easily. You can use this gun at mid-range, but make sure to aim center mass as much as possible to blow them up. This gun excels easily at close range, and again, try to aim center mass, and you'll be rewarded with a satisfying kill. Also, don't use the gun against unshielded opponents as it's not worth it. The Plaza Pistol. This thing is so bad at the moment, I would almost say avoid it. That being said, there are two ways how I use it. First, land at least 4 to 7 shots while pressing the trigger rapidly, then switch to the other weapon and kill them that way. Second, the charge shot can be used at close range. Now keep in mind the tracking isn't good, so you're going to have to aim center mass as best you can. So hit the opponent with a charge shot, then switch to the weapon and kill them. This gun can zoom in as well.
the Pulse Carbine. Now I see a lot of players from both casual and competitive players say this gun sucks. I disagree. I think a lot of players misunderstand the weapon, but at the same time I don't entirely blame you guys because the way how this gun performs when aiming and shooting is very unorthodox and very uncommon with the way this gun works. The way how I use the gun is just to aim above your opponent's head, if you can, and shoot one or two bursts, if you can. Then switch to the weapon and finish them off. Think of the Pulse Carbine as strictly a long-range plasma pistol, as this excels at stripping shields for easy long-range kills, and sometimes mid-range. Zooming in is very useful. On paper, the damage is very high, but in practice, the gun's role is to take out shields, and that's it. Much like the Plaza Pistol, the Ravager is another weapon that's almost useless at the moment. However, the charge shot is useful with the weapon's area of denial effect. primary fire can be used by shooting two bursts at an opponent, then switch to the weapon to finish them off. This weapon can zoom in as well. This sniper rifle. I mean, it's a sniper. You know what to expect. One shot kills to the head, two, two body shots. The gun has a 5 to 10 times scope and has no spread when zoomed in. The sniper in Infinite at the moment does have spread when firing from the hip. Even if you time your shot, spread is always present from the hip, so keep that in mind. Just some things to look, uh, to look out for. I mean, there aren't real tips I can tell you other than to get good. If you hit the body, just switch to the other weapon and finish them off. The Sentinel Beam. This gun performs a little differently compared to previous games. While this is a literal laser beam, the gun has very high recoil. As a result, the way how I use this gun is close to mid-range, and aim for the torso or even a bit below the torso to counter the recoil. This weapon can zoom in as well if you're feeling confident in hitting the target a bit beyond mid-range.
the shock rifle. To me, this is the banished equivalent to the UNSC sniper rifle. Fun fact, this is actually a 3 round burst kind of sniper with an electric gimmick. You can tell this by looking at the ammo counter at the bottom right of the screen. However, the gun does not take out shields to the body like the sniper, so the gun does a little bit less body shot damage, but it's still a one shot kill to the head. Unlike the disruptor, this gun does not have the damage over time effect, but the gun does have that chain effect where you shoot the opponent and if any other players are nearby, they'll take some chip damage as well. Also, unlike the sniper, this gun only has one zoom level, whereas the sniper has two. Just like the disruptor, the shock rifle can EMP vehicles in two shots. The skewer. This gun is a one shot kill no matter where the spike hits. This gun can zoom in twice, which doesn't make sense to me, but there you go. Honestly, there aren't really tips I, I can offer with this gun, other than you'll just have to practice of getting good with it. The Stalker Rifle. Now 343 does classify this as a sniper in game, but I think 343 is wrong. The gun is similar to a sniper in a sense that the gun can zoom in two times, but that's the only similarity. The gun is similar to this Mangler, as the gun can kill in three shots to the head, or five body shots. Keep in mind this gun does have projectile travel, so just aim for the torso for the most part in my opinion. You can also land maybe two shots on the opponent, then switch to the other weapon and finish them. Finally, the Commando. Another weapon people say sucks. At first I didn't believe that, but over time I think that might be true. In my opinion, if you think you can use the gun, go ahead. If not, leave the Commando on the weapon rack. The gun does have 2 times zoom, which is useful, but the weapon is easily outclassed by the BR at long range because the Commando has weapon spread and recoil it'll manage, unfortunately. With that being said, here are some tips on how I use the gun. First, fire full auto for the first 6 shots if you can manage to recoil. Then let go of the trigger for a second and fire full auto for the rest of the mag. The gun kills in 8 shots to the head or 13 body shots. Sniper. Much like the sidekick, there is a sweet spot between full auto and tapping the trigger, which I'll show here. Available. Again, much like the sidekick, while Bloom is much more manageable on this gun, even if you use it correctly, some retard won't give a damn about accuracy. Fire full auto and still kill you. Not your fault, that's on 343. Active camo, inbound. 
There you go. That's the end of today's video. I hope this helped anyone out there, and if it did, please leave a like and share this video with anyone who might be interested. By the way, any changes to these weapons or even new weapons, I'll try to leave updates down in the description. So even if someone is watching this in the future, uh, make sure to check down in the description for updated changes. If you want to stick around my channel, consider subscribing. You can also follow me on Twitter and catch me live on Twitch. Both links will be down in the description. And until next time, peace.